Well, this is awkward. Quite awkward. Uh, so, what happened in episode 5 was, a, you know, a good role-playing session and all that, but the recording of said session was eaten by my recording software. Um, and I'm very, very unhappy about this. Um, like, the number one reason that I, I record these sessions and put them up here is so that if a player misses a session, um, they can just go and watch the recording. That, that's the main reason I do it. That's, that's the reason I got started and created a YouTube channel to begin with, so I could record the sessions, put them up there. That way, people didn't feel like they were completely missing out if they missed a session. Um, and I'm very frustrated because this was the first time we've had somebody miss a session, and of course, the fucking recording doesn't work. I am upset about that. Um, I'm sure the next episode will have a recap as well, told from the play perspective of our players, but um, effectively, they have a mission. Uh, they go off in pursuit of it. I do something a little different than usual. I have them solve a minor mystery first. They have to search... Uh, this uh, mendicant's quarters to, to find where he might have gone because their job is to rescue him from places unknown to get him back to the mendicants. And um, that, was, that was an interesting vignette um, because it allowed us to flesh out what they were going after just, just a little bit before setting out on the mission proper. Um, and... I think that's something I just want to start doing more. Not necessarily like a full-on investigation, but taking the time to let them do just a, that little bit of groundwork, some information gathering. Because um, I haven't really, we haven't really done gather information roles. I've kind of treated it like other things. I, th I think what I want to do is I want to say every character, okay, you've, you've taken this job, now every character, can do a gather information. You tell me what you want to learn, how you want to learn it, tell me what action you're going to roll, and we'll see how much information you dig up. Um, you know, they try to do something that's just obviously not going to work very well. They're going to have lessened effect. Uh, if they get right to the heart of it, they'll have greater effect. They'll learn more. Um, and that will flesh out the job for us a little more before they get on it. And I think what that's going to do is that's going to let them focus on what they're there to do. Because I feel like we kind of, on a lot of these jobs, we kind of get lost figuring out what we're going to do. And they have to figure it out after they've already chosen their approach, which is, it's, it's kind of the design, but I feel like they need... They need something to go on beforehand because they, they flounder a bit. Um, and they did it in this past session, too, because they, they go to uh, the drug factory where the mendicant's been hauled off to to make drugs for a drug lord. And their approach is social because that's that's usually deception. That That's that's usually the approach they got like to go with because um, it lets them keep their guns put away and they feel like that they have that as a fallback the plan but you know if things go wrong and that's that's fine um i kind of wish they'd vary their approach a little more but i'm not sure what i can do to incentivize that without railroading them and i, I don't want to railroad them um I can understand why they want to go with what they know and what they know works. So I, I get it. I'm not. I'm not down on them for doing that. Um. So during the job, they they have a lengthy negotiation with the drug dealer. They they go in pretending that they're going to supply some precursor chemicals that are hard to get hold of. We made up the one, the, the name of the chemical is entropazine, which might be something I stole from somewhere, but it, it came right off the dome. I don't know. And I don't care to know. Um, and they, they get into 
get down to brass tacks and they they eventually negotiate a drug deal. They're going to provide what amounts to two of their cargo holds worth of uh, entropazine for 15 credits. That That's the deal they made with this guy. And the fact that and when they they pulled the guy out, they, they completed the job they were there to do on top of this and they did it kind of quiet um they kidnapped two guards and another one was uh persuaded to let them go and he ran for his life afterwards uh in what amounted to a rather, rather interesting flashback um and i i think maybe i might have given away a little too much on that, but they were also doing something really desperate and they got a success and they're going to suffer the consequences of it. So we'll, we'll circle back on that one because that's got to be a hook for something in the future. Like part of the I couldn't give them a good consequence right away because it didn't make sense narratively. Effectively, they the flashback that Pax did with an assist from Emmett was to uh, try to befriend one of the guards at the drug factory in advance. Perfect, perfect flashback thing. Um, I'm saying, okay, this is, you know, it's going to be for standard effect or no, what was it? Like, I think I gave him the opportunity to trade position for effect on it and he did it on top of pushing himself so they invested a lot in it invested a lot of stress in it too um and so it was going to be uh desperate but with great effect and they got a mixed success and my first thought was okay so they saved the guy's life from armed assailants that's why that's why he owes them that much that's why they're getting such a great effect out of him but it comes at a cost and they've gone through this whole social situation. Um, I, I can't like give them serious harm retroactively. That didn't make sense. And then have them suddenly have wounds pop up when they're three quarters of the way through the job. That doesn't make sense. So what I decided on was, okay, there's, there's gonna be serious consequences. They killed uh, the nephew of Draxler, of Draxler's Raiders. Um, I had them pegged as a possible antagonist faction um, that they could pull a job against at some point, and now they're pulled in. So they straight up lost one rep right away. Virtually any entanglement they have is somehow going to be tied to this to let them know that, yeah, there's consequences. Uh, and they gathered three heat from that. Uh, that was that was the part I felt uh, least sure of about the way the session went. As for like the mechanic stuff I've talked about in previous GM sessions, I introduced more clocks and I felt like they worked pretty well. I didn't overdo it. I maybe overdid it a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll find a happy medium someday. Um, I think it's just I'm not going to use a clock for anything that can be resolved or anything that will definitely be resolved in two actions or less, I will not use a clock for, I think is the the, the yardstick I want to use. Because um, a four clock where you fill in th three sections of that, unless you're doing it just to, to build tension with the players and let them know how close they are to something bad happening. I, yeah, that's not necessary. But if it's like, Oh, we're setting the alarm off in a four clock, and you just fucked up bad, so we're going to check off three seconds there. That might build some tension, so that, I, I guess I could use it in that situation, but I think for the most part, I'm just not going to focus on clocks too much. Except, obviously, where appropriate. Um, so... And they left, they, they got the guy out, um and they're going to deliver him next episode, first thing. A um, few other notes, uh, Mike's character, Lyndon, was not there because Mike was not able to be there. Um, Alex, who is Chris's brother, brought in his character, Cap, um, who may or, not be, may or may not be joining us for the next session, a scoundrel. Um, 
I, I don't know yet. Uh, because we've kind of got a group that's already kind of going here, like maybe I should spend a lot of time figuring out how's he fit in specifically, how, I'm gonna, how am I going to interrogate this character a little more. Um, but I think I'm going to be really a lazy, shitty GM and not do that until he plays at least one more session. Uh, just because I don't even know if he's going to join us more. So, I'll be lazy. I'll be a shitbag. I'm fine with that. Um, so, I, I guess I should get straight into figuring out what our effects are here. So, let's look at factions. They have done a job for the mendicants, so... Mark an X there for that. Uh, Draxler's Raiders are now on our radar. And they're at minus one straight off the bat. And I'll put down Draxler's Nephew. Yeah I, yeah, I can't spell. I'm terrible. God. It's been a week, y'all. It's been a week, and I am dead in the brain pan. Okay. So that's a good note there. We've got that updated. Um, yes, and last time I did, uh, I did Mark Plus One status with the Guild of Engineers. All right, um, let's see, so we're going to adjust heat. So they've already got three heat in the IOTA system for uh, the, the flashback, the desperate flashback that went nasty. So the job itself was, I think that was going to be relatively quiet. Or is it completely quiet? No, it's not completely quiet because they, they disappeared a couple of guards and their, uh, their buddy buddy um, disappeared as well. So that's not going to be completely quiet. So they're going to get plus one for that. So Iota Heat's going to go to four. Um, and they didn't I already handled the killing of the guy. I, uh, yeah. All right, so it's just going to be a plus one there. So. Payoff is eight or six, and that solve. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what they choose there. Maybe they'll maybe they'll even try to negotiate for the solve. Um, and yeah, I'll, I can try to negotiate for that. Or I'll, I'll let them. Just because I think it'd be something interesting that they could work on. But whatever. If they don't like it. I don't care. Whatever. Um, hmm. Weed one. All right. Um, just a reminder to do upkeep because I keep forgetting when we run through. And then uh, heat. It occurs to me that I am th throwing too much cred at them. Um, but. I don't really care. I don't see this being like a super long campaign where I have to worry about them retiring too early because I, I gave them eight cred rather than six for what amounts to a standard job. But like eight just divides up more evenly. Um, just it avoids a lot of pain in the ass shit. Um, let's see. We're, I'll remind them that they have taken plus one heat. I'm low exposure on that job. Um, 
And then we go to Entanglements. Their highest wanted level is still one. So I roll my Polyhedron Fend. Oh, six. Now I get to roll on the wanted level two table. Three. Bounty Hunter. Ooh, let me look this up. Let me look this up. All right, so Bounty Hunter, an enemy faction hires a Bounty Hunter, fight, evade, or pay them off. You have no faction with negative status, or if you have, you avoided this entanglement for right now. No, they got some negative status factions, and of course, this Bounty Hunter is hired by Draxler's Raiders. Um, So, hired by Draxler, um, we'll make him, we should make him something like interesting and scary, not necessarily overtly scary, but something that, um, so basically uh, uh, they've got potency in combat. And they can get paid off by three credits. Um, tier's going to be higher than them, so it's effectively... Basically everything with him is going to be desperate. Um, they will have to... I will make them roll for everything. Like, if they want to pay him off, it's going to be... They're going to make a roll to pay him off. Like... Just that is going to have to to take some doing. Um, so how how do I portray this guy? So he's going to be a Xeno, just so, because we have, I don't think we've had any Xenos in the game. Like, they're not supposed to be the majority of peoples here, but, like, they are there. And somehow I think I've just missed out on having them, because we've, because we've had too many Urbots. Too many fucking Urbots. Um, he's a Xeno. Um, he's got, he's going to be supported by two drones. Um, and he's going to use way telekinetics. Um, should he also have, no, I won't, I won't give him a light sword. We'll just say he has, what does he have? Of course, he's going to have a blaster pistol as backup. Um, he's going to have a long spear. Uh, long bladed spear. It's going to be exquisite, beautiful. Uh, a work of art to behold it. Um, so I think there's going to be a clock to make him vulnerable um, because the drones will not be for attack. They'll be for surveillance and defense. Um, I don't th I don't want to use the light shield idea again because that I talked about that with um, Battle Sister Diana and like I like the idea, and I want to. I want to get it into some action at some point. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> so.
So I think the entanglement is going to pop up after. Yeah, we're. I want the entanglement to pop up after their. Or do I? I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to do these in order. So the entanglement comes before their downtime. Um, last time I had that, like, literally they're coming back to the ship afterwards. I feel like it wouldn't be appropriate for the response to be quite that fast. Um... Hmm. Maybe we get to we do it during the stage where um, they are talking about their next job. Like they're ready to call somebody, and that's when power goes out in the ship. Because that's another thing. Like the ship's been there in the background and used for some of the action but we've never done really done much of anything inside of it um hardly anything so this is a chance to sort of flesh the ship out as well um so that's that's good but yes the, the entanglement will come um during job selection So they're going to have to make him vulnerable. Everything's going to be desperate. Start off desperate. I want to write this down so I don't screw it up later. Start desperate. I think I'm just going to call it a... A six clock, or it might be an eight clock. Let him really put the screws to him. Yeah, I think this guy's gonna be. I think this guy's gonna be a certifiable badass. Um. But once they make him vulnerable, one success will take him down, um, put him at their mercy, as appropriate. Um, and obviously they've got the op option to pay him off. Um, it says three credits. Uh, I don't think that's appropriate. That should cost them more. They're definitely not going to want to pay. They got taxed by the by an entanglement session prior to the previous one. So I, I think they're really not going to be happy to pay. Um, but I think I will. Yeah, I'll leave in the option to pay them off. But I'm going to make it four credits. Um, and I think he's going to set them. Okay. So that's entanglements. Um, so what jobs do we have? So the first job, the obvious one that they seem to like the idea of, and I was very surprised by this, is, oh, and I put in the question, is there going to be blowback from their, their buddy? Uh, what's his name? I've forgotten his name. I'll figure it out later. I should probably figure it out now. Gosh, dang it. Um, Amarath, Jan Larock. Now let's put him in with our 
notes here under unaligned. Um, Drug Lord on Amarath. Is he going to find out if the crew stole his guy, if that was actually what they're there for? Um, let's just do a fortune roll. One die. Because uh, he's low tier. One, one die. A six, he'll know. Four, five, he will be suspicious. One through three, he doesn't know. And that was a three. No, he doesn't know. So they can go ahead with this job. Now, 15 creds is way too much money to give them for a single job. So this will need to be multiple jobs. I'm thinking it's going to take at least two jobs to get the amount of drugs they need. Um, maybe, maybe this is a weird way to use clocks here, but what if, what if they want 15 credits worth of drugs. We have a 15 clock that needs to be filled up in some way. And on a job to get this stuff, they have an option to get anywhere between uh, 5 and 10 if they're successful. Uh, and then they will need to figure out a way to get it all delivered. Like, they will probably need to pay another ship, a, a freighter, to, to move it for them. And if they have to move it um, between systems, then that's going to be a smuggling job in and of itself. So, I think, I think I'm going to have to be upfront with that. It's like, this is not something you are going to have done by the end of tonight in the next session is this is too big a job to do all at once this is going to be multiple jobs tied together uh, based on where you source the stuff how you get it how you're transporting it and they're going to have to figure that out um this probably isn't a job that's really suited for their crew um but I think they're really excited about it, so I think they need to be given the option. Tropazine. No, that's not how we spell this fake drug. It's spelled like this. Yes. They're going to have to figure out the transport. Is smuggling going to be needed? Depending on how they're moving it, where they're moving it from. Um, I think there should be a couple of leads they can turn up. Uh, the first thought I had on leads is the Yaru. Because uh, they're making all sorts of clones, so they're going to have lots of chemicals for doing that. Yaru. Who else would be an appropriate target for a bunch of um, P 
people looking for drugs. Uh, I could say the Ashen Knives, because uh, that's that's really dangerous, and they've sort of got a relate. Do they actually have a set relationship with the Ashen Knives? I'm kind of falling away from that, because I know they had a contact there. No. So okay, that's good. Maybe they'll decide how they feel about the Ashen Knives. Um, <laughs> the mendicants would not have it. Let's see. Anybody else? Turner Society. Let's see, who the hell are they? Okay, so they're syndicate run drug dens masquerading as society houses. Their drugs are cooked with a kitty cat animal parts and Vossi and crystals. Well, maybe not them. Of course, it'd be interesting if they go, well, how can we. Can you smoke a Vossi and crystal? Ooh. Yeah, we'll, we'll put the, the Turner Society down as an option as well. Those would be the three potential targets. They can target with different activities. Um... Yeah, so I think it's going to be that simple. I think it's going to be they figure out who they're going after, and I can probably make up on the spot something to help them flesh it out. Um, <laughs> we'll... Yeah, so if they decide that they want to do this, they'll pick a target, say the Yaru. Uh, I think that one would be fun, because we could get really trippy with some weird clone interactions. Um, but the Ashen Knives could be really scary, Turner Society could be really weird. Um, I'll read a little more on all of those, just so that I know what I want my jumping off point to be, um, if they choose one of those. Um, but I think for the mission itself, I can just kind of wing it, because it's going to involve a clock of get the stuff and get it out um and i'm gonna this is also an opportunity because of the scale of what they're taking it's not just oh we're gonna grab a person and get them away it's this is a lot of cargo you're gonna need to like load in on a truck or the ship or something um so this is probably gonna make for some interesting flashbacks if they do that um, so yeah, yeah, I will, I will let them do that. And I, I want to, and that's, that's where, I think that's where having them do information gathering roles after they've selected the job, but before they choose their approach and make the engagement role, um, will let me flesh out the mission and figure out a few things about it before they're in it. And then I take a five minute break after the engagement role to actually sort of get a few, get the juices going a little bit. Um, and yeah, I, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. Um, but you know, maybe they don't want to, uh, Maybe they don't want to do that. Maybe they don't want to... Uh, 
they don't want to be drug dealers. They they balk at that idea. Like they were really hot on it before, but now no, drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. Let's not do that. Okay, drugs are bad. Um, so they'll need other options. I think. I think I want to start a clock on are they ready for the next step for the Cult of the Seekers. It's going to be a... I'll call it a 12 clock. Yeah, and there are tier 2 factions, so they roll two dice on a fortune roll each after each um, mission at this point. So, six and five. So, three X's. Um, we should have the Guild of Engineers. Um, as an option. Uh, I am just retarded tonight. We load. So, Phil Karat will have something for them. What will that something be? I feel it should be stuff with weird high technology. Um, let's, let's, let's take another look at their faction information, just to get the juices flowing. Um, decadent and powerful, the Guild of Engineers are beyond the ability of the governor to police. The Guild is exploiting this using their, his remote sector to perform experiments banned by the cult and the hegemon. But their current project involves converting whey energy into a highly unstable but physical compound. Um, so their their first tests, their first tests of this whey energy converter they um they are transporting the results back to a lab for study because the actual whey converter is out in some weird place to keep it secret um and they lose contact with their ship so the crew is going to be sent to rescue the head scientist and if possible get a sample everything else is expendable Uh, so, let's see, I think this will be a very different sort of mission, um, it will be, hmm, I, okay, so I think the main antagonists here are going to be way creatures. Like, the they've converted the way energy into a physical substance, and they have put it in some sort of contain, set of containers. They're going to bring it back to study it. One of the containers fails, the way energy seeps out, and that draws way creatures which attack the ship. Um... I think the, I think this is going to be an urgent job. I think if they don't take it, um, Thale Karat's going to be done with them. So this is their chance of, are we going to, are we going to go with the big boy here, uh, the Guild of Engineers, or are we going to be drug dealers? 
think I think that I think those are the only two jobs I need. Um, if they get a wild hair up their ass to do something else, fine, whatever, sure, awesome. Um, so this is take it or we're done. Um, I think it's going to be a big payoff. I think it's going to be 10 cred. Um, that's going to feel like a big step for them. Being able to get 10 cred off one job. And they're going to... Yeah, they're going to probably go for this one. So I think I can flesh it out a little bit more than the entropazine sourcing. Um, so this is going to be, we energy converter, and he's, Dale is not going to be up front, he's going to be very secretive. Creatures attack. It's going to be the outskirts of Iota. Uh, and that's why that's why Thale would call them is because they're they're already there. Like he could send his own assets, but they're not going to get there in time. It has to be them. It has to be now. Um, so, given that I'm doing that, maybe 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 just post downtime for the. for the, uh, our little bounty hunter friend there. <sighs> All right, so, What's the head scientist's name? Gorvin Dran. That's spacey. Um, and or recover in. Cover intact sample container. Um, now here's the thing: like this isn't this isn't a joint they can case. I, I was talking about it at the beginning. I want to give them the opportunity to do information gathering roles before they pick their approach and engagement. This isn't a joint that they can case. So what information gathering would they do? Where would they go? What, what would their contacts be? So let's just say it's on a medium freighter. So 
so it's it's not going to be super cramped quarters. Like they're actually going to have to do some exploring. But going back to that gather information, like I'll leave it up to them, and like they don't even all need to take an action if they don't want to. Um, but I want to give them more to. I want to give them more of a chance between when they accept the job and when they make the engagement roll to know what it is that they're they're really trying to accomplish because that's a consistent feeling I've had is that they go into the jobs not necessarily being sure of their objective and the information gathering roles I think will give them more than like the, the information is secondary like it's to help me flesh it out but more than that it's to give them time to know well what exactly is it that um what are we going to uh, what do we want to get out of this so we can agree on something in advance? Um, yeah, I think in the past I've had their handled inter information gathering as sort of a flashback thing. And they hesitate to use flashbacks if they're not willing to spend stress. So they end up not gathering information. So, yeah, I, th I think that's going to be a step in the right direction. How they'll handle it for this specifically, this may not be the best start. Um, it'll be much better if they decide to go with the, the drug deal. Um, Uh, yeah, fine. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna overthink it. Um, yeah, they'll they'll have the option. They'll do what they want. Um, I'll think about imagery for way creatures, um, and because I, I don't want to go with the fish again, I want it to be something different, um, so that it's all new and scary and threatening and whatnot, um, and. Like, I, I kind of like the way creatures because it feels like something they're not comfortable with. They can't bluff a way creature, at least not in the way they're used to. So I, I do like that. Um, yeah. So... I think I think I got what I need for next session. I've got my very interesting entanglement, um, and we have a potential couple of major potential jobs here. Um, don't know exactly what it's going to end up as, but uh, that's the most fun thing because we're supposed to play to find out what happens, right? Um, and wish me luck. Thanks. <laughs>